today's topic is using the unseen therapist as a coach. That's another way of saying using unseen therapist as the ultimate guide, the ultimate wisdom, if you will, within to do all kinds of things. And I'm joined today with one of our really seasoned experts in the unseen therapist, who you will see who used to use this as what she called an inner guide long before she you know, learned about the unseen therapist because inner guide and unseen therapist are really the same thing. But interesting stories as she uses that inner wisdom as a coach. Marion, say hello to everybody and hello. <laughs> give us give us a um, example or two, could you? Well, I think uh, I'll start with how I got the idea to talk about this because Gary, you've been talking about heavenly habits habits that help us connect to the unseen therapist throughout our days. Um, not just when we sit down and do a session or we're in our practice groups. And to me, we sometimes overlook opportunities to connect with her because we think that they're so mundane that why would I turn to the unseen therapist to help me with my exercise? regime or why would I turn to her for my eating? Um, so this is an opportunity that people can use as a heavenly habit to connect with the unseen therapist. And I think it happened for me many, many decades ago when I was getting over a compulsive eating problem in bulimia and the approach that I was using was to learn to listen to my own body's inner wisdom around what foods I needed, how when I was hungry, when I was full, and to distinguish between emotions and desire to eat because somehow they were mixed up in my head. And so I would listen to that inner voice of wisdom all through my day. And eventually, I started to understand that that voice spoke not only to my physical needs about what foods I needed and how much, but it also spoke to my emotional needs. And I could turn to that inner wisdom, which I called my inner guide, um, to help me deal with emotions. And that brought me eventually on a spiritual path, realizing that that inner guide was more than just me it was a connection to something bigger than me. So I started with something very mundane, my eating. Um, and from there, developed a life path for myself having to do with spiritual growth. <clears throat> so I think that we'll, we can never just discount anything as being too trivial or mundane to turn to the unseen therapist about. And um, I still am guided by what my inner wisdom tells me around when I'm hungry, when I'm full. I completely got over my bulimia and um, it's just not an issue in my life anymore, but I still turn to her. Well, you, of, yeah, if, go I, ahead. If, if I may interject for a minute, uh, you, you know, you're a PhD or psychologist and you've been in the therapy field for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, it's my experience that someone with bulimia using conventional psychology, conventional therapy. That's a real challenge to get beyond. That's your experience? Um, it was what I was reading. And I, I got into this field around before there was a term bulimia. So I was part of the eating disorder field at the very inception of those kinds of concepts. And it was pretty much standard. You control the bulimia, you never get over it. Okay. But that wasn't my experience at all. With the, I, that wasn't your experience with the inner guide? That's right. I was okay. able to completely get over All right. Well, see, that's really important because that's your coach, okay? But what I want to mm -hmm. emphasize here, and you can correct me if you think I didn't say it right, but we can get all kinds of advice from outside ourselves. There are books and experts and all kinds of things to give us advice about bulimia i suppose and all kinds of other things 
Um, but it's ultimately that coach inside, that inner wisdom, which I'm finding is a lot more accurate, a lot more useful, a lot more powerful in most cases than some outside advice. Not to say outside advice is useless. I'm not saying that. But ultimately, you took care of something that was considered incurable. You know, you you manage it. You don't cure it with conventional technique. I said it right? Yes. Okay. That's um, how it's seen, that you manage it. That's right. Yeah. Okay. But yet you use your inner wisdom, uh, may I say the unseen therapist by another name, okay, mm -hmm. long before I even brought the unseen therapist, that name up to the public, and gone, right? Yeah. That suggests that it, that coach <laughs> <laughs> is really big time because that's something that conventional things manage rather than fix. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to add that in. Please continue. Well, it's, it's certainly she's wiser than any of those many different myriad approaches to how you should deal with an eating disorder or a compulsive eating problem or lose weight. And everyone has a different idea of how you should eat, what foods you should eat, what you shouldn't eat. And she knows better. Now, I have an example. It's not about food, but it's about um, sleep. Mm -hmm. And my granddaughter was having sleep problems. She just could not fall asleep. Her mind would just be constantly thinking and she just couldn't sleep. And so the conventional wisdom was you shut off all your electronics. You shut off your TV. You don't go on your phone. Well, this is a really difficult thing for a teenager to do, but she tried it. And then... She got, I guess, an intuitive sense from Unseen Therapist, which she calls the magic dancer, that disregard what everyone's telling her about going on your phone. When you, she, what she heard is when you go on your phone at night, it helps quiet your mind. It keeps you busy so that your body can calm down. So don't listen to all the advice that you're being told about put your phone away and she did and it helped immeasurably and she was falling asleep faster okay yeah and there's another example but see and we could go on um theoretically to infinity with the stories uh but but uh, uh, the point here is it isn't just for sleep it isn't just the coach just for sleep just for eating disorders it's for every ailment that we have it's for every phobia that we have it's for every relationship issue we have it's for every disease we may contract it's for every diving and on and on and on it goes we have an inner wisdom a coach mm -hmm. which we need to rely upon and the more we rely upon it and, and by the way she's free <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she never sent you a bill, did she? No, not once. <laughs> she not didn't what? even ask for a thank you. She just did it. Yeah, okay. So anyway, I want to emphasize that. Uh, do you have anything more you want to say? Any more stories? Any more things to emphasize? I just have an image that has come to mind when I've been working on things and trying to work my way out of a problem. or um, And I get an image of a path. And the unseen therapist is on the path ahead of me. And she's kind of kind of saying, come on, follow this path. I'll lead you out of the problem. And yeah. that's, that's how you use her. Well, along with that, before we close this, that path, that path is something that um, we need to learn really early on if we can, but we tend not to come to that path that we're later on in, in the years, you know, so we have some kind of resistance if we're getting into this in an older age, in our 40s and 50s and 60s, etc. You know, some resistance to that because we are outside understanding our egos, if you will, already knows how to do these things. And we tend to rely on that. <laughs> it doesn't always work. Okay. But see, that path to me is a form of a 
as we go down that path is a form of developing trust. It's trust that we really need that we're, where we get these, these answers and we listen, we we're, we're by now used to it. So we trust that more than we do our own inner ego stuff or something we might read in a book from an outside source and so on. So it's trust, 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 trust. And along those lines, I just, before we close here, I want to emphasize that below this, this video are some essential links, a link to my introductory book on all this topic and uh, our newsletter and some advanced training and things like that. So I would, I would urge you to urge all our listeners to carry on with that. Anything more, Marion, before we close up? No, I think you summed it up. All right. Great. Well, a big hug to you and a thank okay. you. For, Bye, everybody. For your assistance here. We'll, we'll see you guys next time. 